everyone, it's Carrie here from the Female Entrepreneur Association and welcome to the 10 Minute Masterclass, your weekly dose of inspiration to build a successful business. So today we are talking about something that every single one of us entrepreneurs needs to have, a website. Um, and thanks to all the tools and technology today, a lot of us are making our websites ourselves, which is amazing. Um, however, there are definitely things we need to know when we are creating our own website. So joining us today to talk all about this is the amazing Jessica Tor, founder of DIY Website Academy. So Jess, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I am so excited to be talking about this. I remember back in 2005, I mm -hmm. built my first ever website. It was on Microsoft Front Page, which I don't think exists today. Oh, it was horrific. It was so horrific. Um, and I spent so many hours since then trying to figure out WordPress and trying to figure out like all these different things of how to make to build a really nice looking website. I remember at times feeling like my head physically hurt trying to figure it all out. It was like, oh, it was painful. Um, and I think it is, I think so many entrepreneurs feel like this. So that is why I am excited to jump into this with you and hear all about the things we all need to know when creating our own website. So let's just jump in. What are the things we do need to know? That's brilliant. And I can totally relate because when I was first starting with WordPress, I taught myself everything. And if you don't know what you need to know, it's just like there's so much information. So the first thing that my first tip, and it's probably the most common question that I get, is what do I build my website on? And like you said, like there's so many different platforms. There's Wix, there's Weebly, there's WordPress, there's Squarespace. And there isn't a right or wrong answer for that. But what I say to everyone is think about your business in five, even 10 years time. Do you think that your website's gonna be hosted on something like Wix or Weebly? And it's probably not. The reason why I recommend WordPress is that it's self-hosted, you have full control. And if you ever wanna work with a developer like you have now, um, it's something that you can do easily and you have full control. So whenever you're looking for, uh, if you're looking for WordPress, make sure it's wordpress.org and not .com. Uh, .com is basically hosted with WordPress um, and wordpress.org is self-hosted. Yeah, That was exactly. a bit rambly. <laughs> no, I think that that's um, it's such a big one because I think you do have to plan to grow. And I think sometimes when you're looking at your website initially, you just kind of, you know, the Wix options seem maybe like they're the easiest, but actually, the self-hosted WordPress is just so much better to figure that out and maybe take a little bit more time to figure that out and get going with it than um, than trying to take the easier option of a different platform where it is definitely. See, and the thing with Wix as well is that it's drag and drop. It seems really easy, but there's a couple of things to keep in mind. Wix is hosted by Wix, so if for whatever reason they decide to close up in the morning, so does your website. And yeah. if you ever want to transfer to a different platform like WordPress, it's I'm not going to say it's a nightmare, but it's so much harder than starting off on the right foot first. So definitely, I personally recommend WordPress.org. You've just got complete control, and it's easy to outsource if you do need help as well. Yeah. Okay, so what's the next thing we need to know? So my second tip is people are always saying, okay, I want to DIY my website, but I'm scared it's going to look like a DIY website. So the trick for that is to create a mood board. And I actually, I kind of dug this up while I was moving. This is like one of my very first mood boards. So cheesy, but it's just basically what you want to do is you want to get all of the different brands and the images and the photos that inspire you and put them all together. Because when you start planning your site or you're trying to design it, it's really easy to fall in love with one person's brand and you basically end up just replicating that style versus having your own. So what I found was when I was pinning all of my pictures together, there were certain things, certain colors, certain fonts and styles that seemed to come up over and over again. And that's how I knew, okay, I'm obviously not drawn to maybe um, too many photos of stationery, but I love the golds that they use with it. So that's how you can start planning it out. Um, the second thing that's really important about a mood board is choosing your color schemes. And this is so you create consistency. Uh, there's a lot of DIY websites that I've seen where they want to use all these different colors, they want to use all these different fonts, and it can end up feeling a bit overwhelming when you're looking at the site. Yeah. So what I say is choose one to two focus colors. So you could have those colors are probably most prominent on your site, and then two to three complementing colors. Now, those are ones that you don't want to use throughout. Maybe some highlights, uh, different elements or different arrows pointing to different parts of your site. Um, but that's what I recommend for your colors. 
fonts, choose perhaps one main font and one complementing font. I don't know if you can just see it here, but for example, we've got Melanie Duncan. She's got a nice simple font at the bottom, and then she has a nice script one at the top. It creates depth, uh, but you're still staying consistent with everything that you're doing. Yeah, I think that's important. It, there's little things, isn't it, sometimes on a website that make the biggest difference. There's little details of like the color and the font and how it makes how it makes it feel like the website feel. Absolutely, and I think it's funny because when I was first starting, I was so sure what I wanted my website to look like in my branding, and I get a lot of students that say that as well. And once they do this exercise and they actually see what's out in front of them, they're like oh, I didn't realize I was actually drawn more to blues because that keeps coming up over and over again. So it's just a really good way to find your true voice with what you're doing. Uh, you're not overloading with too many different ideas. You're narrowing it down. Yeah. Now, my last tip for DIY websites is so important, and I think we've seen a rise uh, in the past couple of months. We even found with some of the hosting companies that have had some hacks. So when you're doing a DIY website, especially if you're new to everything, make sure you're backing up your site. And this is so important. I've had it once where I accidentally deleted my site, and I've been doing this for a long time. But because I had backups, it was fine, and I was able to restore it in a couple of minutes. But I've had some students in the past who didn't back up their site. They didn't, you know, follow those steps. And it's just, it's a long process getting everything back. Um, the, uh, the platform that I recommend for backing up is managewp.com. And it's super easy. You can schedule regular backups so you know you're always protected. Um, but it's just, it's a really basic thing to do, but it's going to save yourself so much stress in the long run. Yeah, because I feel like it's one of those tips where everyone hears and they're like, yeah, right, okay, it's never going to happen to me. Oh my goodness, but it does happen. I've, it's happened to me before and it is a nightmare. And I just feel like everyone needs to pay attention to that one. If the, your site isn't backed up already, make sure you back it up. Because Right. Absolutely. When like everything you, you get to work so hard to put like posts together and everything together, and then it's just poof, it's gone. And even like a lot of people that are starting out, I've had some students say, "Well, I'm new. Like, why would anyone even try to hack into my site? I don't have any credit card information." But the thing is, uh, I had a recent uh, student who she had her website up, and someone had actually put malware in through her site so they could put backlinks to their own website. So it's not necessarily that you have to be this massive uh, organization or have this a lot of traffic coming to your site. You could be a target literally in the first week that you um, put your site up. So yeah. you know you're not losing anything. Just back up. If there's only one thing you do, back up your site. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that. And um, one of the questions that I have for you um, back on your second tip was, do you have any recommendations for where people can go to get really good themes for their website? Um, I often use ThemeForest.net, but um, do you know of any other websites where people can go and get inspiration or even use themes? And are there any themes you would recommend above others for WordPress? Definitely. So that's actually a really good question. There's a lot of things, themes available. What I recommend is getting one with a good track record. Uh, so there's two types of things that people probably come across. You've got frameworks and then you've got parent themes. Uh, people have probably heard of things like uh, Genesis, Thesis, even Headway. Those are frameworks, and those are basically, if you think of the framework of your house. So there's not a lot of fancy colors. Those are very basic. Uh, people can get them directly from their website, or from their websites, rather. Uh, you can get parent themes, uh, ones that I recommend if you're looking more for feminine themes, for, you know, kind of female entrepreneur association style. Uh, AngieMakes.com is a really great one. There's Restored 316, and there's Blue Chic. Those are really good ones. They, Blue Chic actually works off of the Genesis framework, uh, as does Restore 360, uh, Restore 316 rather. Um, and then other ones like Studio Press, if you want to work off the Genesis framework, there's a lot of great resources. Just make sure that when you're looking for a theme, you have access to the developers, the theme is regularly updated, and you know that there's reviews or people have tested it out and that it's a solid theme. Yeah, good advice. Um, I'll definitely leave the links for those websites um, in the post below, so thanks for that. But thank you so much anyway for just coming to share your tips with us. I think that it's so important for you know, us to know this information because so many of us are creating our own websites nowadays, which is really great that it's become so easy for us all to do, but at the same time it's like trying to navigate it <laughs> and just 
making sure that you do it in the right way um, is just so important because it's such a time saver and you don't want to get down the line and then think oh I should have done it the other way or oops I should have fractured my site but I didn't so thank you so much for coming to share that with us I think it's really helpful. No, oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that too and take it on board. I'd be really interested actually to know how many of you have created your own website. If you want to leave a link in the post below and share share it with us so we can all check it out, then go ahead and do that because it'd be amazing, I'd love to see. Um, but I really hope you've enjoyed this session and I will see you next week for another 10 minute masterclass. Thank you so so much for taking the time to watch one of our videos i really really hope that you enjoyed it i've got something really exciting that i would love to send your way we have created the make it happen guided visualization for you to listen to every single day for the next 30 days to help you to condition yourself to make incredible things happen and along with that we have the make it happen workbook to help you to get really clear on your goals to get so much focus and clarity to make a plan of action so you know what you need to do and when you need to do it so if you would love us to send them your way then all you need to do is subscribe to the email list below and they will be on their way to you so definitely do that and come and join an incredible group of women who are so passionate and determined to achieve amazing things and build successful businesses and I will see you next week for another 10 minute masterclass